All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, folks. Hello. How are you both doing? Well, good, man. Very good. Very good. Very good. Cool. I am joined today. My name is Daniel Bailey. I am Associate Artistic Director at the Bush Theatre. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I am joined this afternoon by two incredible artists, two brilliant writers who I've had the pleasure of kind of watching grow into this, these, these magnificent um, artistic beasts, man. Uh, only I can say that. You lot can't say that. But they're incredible. And um, I'd love you to introduce yourself. We've got a few questions that will probably come up on, uh, on, our, on our IG live. And then I've got a few things that I'd love for us to kind of focus on and talk about. So, um, Tarot, can you introduce yourself, please? Can you give sure. us a job title? Sure. My name is Tarot William. My pronouns are he, him. And I'm the writer of Red Pitch. And my day-to-day -day is writer and director. Wicked. So, and Ryan, can you also introduce yourself as well, please? Nice. Uh, my name is Ryan, Ryan Kelly Cameron. I am artistic director at New Mauriche. I'm the writer of for Black Boys who have considered suicide when the hue was too heavy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my pronouns are he, him. <laughs> so, Ryan, I'll start with you then, because um, you've got a, you've got a long ass title, but for, yeah, for yeah. very good reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a dope yeah. title. Um, and people abbreviate it and call it for boys, right? For black for boys. Black boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, so could you just talk to us about, or give us a, a kind of brief description of what the play's about? And I guess for those that haven't seen it yet, it's going to the real court. Boop, 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 boop. Again, for the culture. Yeah, man, it's massive. But can you give us a brief description on the, on the play, please? Yeah, I think for me, um, the way that myself and, and, and Tristan, um, who directed the first time round, um, and is directing, co-directing with me this time around, we described it as a black boy fantasia. So it was a way of being able to really access the heart of what it meant to be young, black and British. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? We were looking at the canon of, uh, of working our culture and going, how comes the narrative of what it means to be young and black and British is one way. Do you know what I mean? There's only one mm -hmm. way that you're allowed to be in terms of media. And we were like, how about we throw six different unique versions of what it means to be young and black and British on stage right now and be interrogating them. We, we spend time with them, we sit with them, we laugh with them, we love with them. And hopefully by the end of it, we come out of, come out of it understanding ourselves a little more, understanding our brothers, our fathers, the youngsters coming up. There's just a general cultural understanding of, uh, of hearing young black men speak. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you. I know you might not know this, but um, do you know what the ticket? I know, like, it's about us kind of demystifying how we interact with these buildings, right? You know, Royal Court is a massive institution. The yeah. Bush is an institution in itself. You know what I mean? We are also we also consider ourselves massive. You know what I mean? But um, it would be really it would be nice to kind of probably talk about how people can come and see the show. You know, like if there are accessible price and structures that will help yeah. people book tickets and yeah just yeah. to kind of run up I'll on that i know about top of my head i know that we yeah. have um tickets for groups so the main the main focus for this and the main when i came in for my first ever meetings with the royal court it was like how are we getting the culture into this place yes um, <laughs> what are we doing? Do you know what i mean so the place will look different it was it will sound different it will smell different do you know what i mean mm -hmm. um yeah Come and see. But um, we've got tickets ranging from £5, I believe, to £35. Group bookings are a lot cheaper. Mondays, ooh, I think it's 9 o'clock. The phone start um, for £12 tickets for any yeah. seat in that house. So, um, yeah, price-wise, it's accessible. And it's not just for me. It weren't just about money because I don't want to yeah. ever say that my culture don't have money. It's, it's not that. It's about, it's about do people feel like it belongs to them. So when yeah. I went to the room for it was more than going, black people, you're invited here. It's like, no, black boys, this is your space. It's yours. However you want to react to the piece, you want to laugh out loud. Because when I was, you know, man, when we were growing <laughs> up, you go to the theater, it's shh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's your show. Do you know what I mean? So if anyone exactly. feels uncomfortable, then let it be that, in it. But it's your team. Um, so yeah. yeah, 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 that's incredible. I know I'm gonna get on to you in a second, but 
we had, you know, we had an audience that come in actually, it was uh, Terrell's young group. And they came in and they felt welcome. They felt so, they felt so much a part of the fabric of the bush and what we're trying to do here that they just yeah. pulled out popcorn and just yeah. started eating their crisps, started eating their food, drinking their drink. And it was the best experience to sit with them just behind them and see them enjoying theatre in a way that it's supposed to be enjoyed, you know? Yeah. Like it's supposed to be enjoyed like that. That's how it started, you know? Obviously, we yeah. don't want no one throwing food at us during the performances, yeah. but it was it was made like that, right? Everybody comes in, has a drink, yeah. has a bit of food, they chill, they talk, they interact, they engage, and I, and, I, and yeah, man, I love that. I'm loving that we're changing. I'll be offended if people if people are silent, and I'm offended. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not <laughs> yeah. <me. laughs> yeah, I mean, it's an experience. Yeah. It's an experience yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, as well for me, it's demystifying who theatre belongs to. Yeah, you know what I mean, so yes, I understand theater from a Western canon, but you man didn't create the thing. Exactly, you know what I mean? exactly. You know, it comes exactly. way before you man. Anyway, let me not get into. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we, put it, we put, you know, what I mean, we got a policy. We, we policy. This is what we do, man. You know what I mean? So I, I appreciate that, Terrell, yeah. brother T W. How you doing? <laughs> how you feeling? I feel good. I feel obviously it was press night last night, so I'm still yeah. up from that. Um, we received a lot of love, so I feel grateful for that. I'm feeling happy. Can you tell us, uh, can you give us a brief description of Red Pitch, please? I'm gonna try. It's a <laughs> play about three friends who share a dream and they are working towards achieving that dream, but on, in the backdrop of that, there's so many changes that are happening around them that's affecting them. And they're trying to negotiate that at the same time. The, mo mm. the most significant change is the area. And of course, mm. some people are moving and there's questions on how that will affect the friendship. Mm. And that's two topics of regeneration forward slash gentrification, depending on what side of the fence you sit. Um, and interrogating the impact that those things have on friendship and community told through the lens of 16 year olds. Yeah. It's a dope description. And I, I, I shouldn't be asking you, but do you know what our pricing structure is? You don't be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't be. Tickets range from 10, 10 to £30. Pounds. Yeah. Just count me in tickets as well, which are available. Um, yeah. But the bush, even... I have to say, like, myself, even being here, just seeing the family unit that you lot have, the way that all the different departments interact and everybody's so different, but still, still one. Like, there's still this one yeah. family. I've definitely yeah. got a sense from that um, in, in being in the building, and it's, it's just been magical to observe. Yeah. But it's, it's a great space. Um, and as Ryan was saying, you know, fit as... Fit is not just for one kind of people, it's for, it's for everybody. Storytelling is for everybody. And I think the Bush do that so well as they tell so many diverse stories, stories that range in topic and in themes. And, and, it just, and yeah, I'd encourage, I'd encourage people to just, if you're, if you're, especially if you're local to the building, just develop a relationship with it because it's a special place. Absolutely, man. I love that. We're going to put it on an ad. Just put you in the ad there, do you know what I mean? No, but, um, the reason why we've obviously gathered here this afternoon is because we've got overlapping themes, right? So Red Pitch and For Black Boys have, have, have a couple of themes that overlap. And I'd love us to kind of talk about both those processes of making those, those pieces of work because they are also kind of autobiographical to an extent, right? So for both of you, and I don't mind who answers first, but for both of you, what was the process of like making something that's so close to you and then presenting it almost or, or I guess um or sharing it is probably a better a, a better turn of phrase so yeah what was it like creating something first that is so personal and then sharing it with a with an audience um I, I could kick that off man um so I've said in interviews before uh for Black Boys it actually took 10 years for me to want to present it and I think that in itself is is is, is a um exclamation of how close and how deep the themes of this play are for me, you know, going, and not even just from an artistic standpoint, though it's not ready yet, but going, what is it that I'm trying to say? And, and am, I, am I articulating it in the right way? And the first half of the play I wrote five years ago, and then actually waited five years to get more life 
uh, perspective. I had children. I, I became a business owner. I, do you know what I mean? So I can see things yeah. as a young black guy and then see things as a slightly older black man. Um, mm. And also, and also give that insight and perspective to the piece. Um, after when we finished for Blackbird, I went away for about two weeks. That's how much oh. it took out of me. And it was, it, it really, really, do you know what I mean? Like I, I said it before, like I'm bearing my soul on this stage and I, I don't mm. think I could ever write anything like this again. Um, mm. You know, the characters are myself. There's pieces of myself in every single one of the characters mm. and the people that I grew up around, the community that I grew up around. And like I was saying now, the, per, the perspective that I have now, I could see that that brother who kept himself to himself, who mm. or, or was a bit scatty every now and then, was actually going through depression or psychosis. Right. When back then it was just like, oh, that mad brother. I don't chat to him, he's a mad brother. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. actually, no, he's going through something. And the, mm. play, the characters in the play talk about things, but they talk about it from a perspective of what they know and where they are. So I'm not going to have a character that's like, oh, I'm depressed right now. It's like, mm, you don't have that language around me. No. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm having a down day, don't chat to me. So the characters are real. They come from a really real play. And um, I'm going to be honest, it's a lot to see them on stage. And also the character actors that are portraying mm -hmm. these characters are also black boys. Yes. So for them, it's huge. Every single day, it's a battle between my character and myself. How much yeah. do I display? Today, I might not feel like I can go to that place. And yeah. me, I, well, I get it. Do you know what I mean? We're here, pastoral yeah. care. Like, and finding yeah. out so many new things about how to look after people and keep the process going. So, um, yeah, man, it's it's my soul, man. I thought that's the only way I can really describe it. Do you know what I mean? Bro? I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate it. For sure. See? Yeah. I would, I would say something similar. I think um, there are three main characters in, in my piece, and all three of them are versions of myself, I would say. Um, I think... We Dan, as you know, we've been working together on this for four years now. So it feels like a great place where we're at. It's been such a long journey, which mm. just adds to the emotions of, you know, press night, but also beyond that, just like having a production on at the Bush Theatre. Um, but to see to see myself and and also within that, one of the most notable, like one of the fee the feedback that I keep getting the most that that's us, that's me, that's that's so-and-so, that I know these people, do you know what I'm saying? So I feel like uh, within the personal, you'll find the universal. And I think mm. I've tapped in, I definitely have tapped into to, to seeing, to seeing stuff about myself that I wouldn't necessarily be comfortable with speaking about. Um, and, and it's also interesting to, to put it with 16 year olds, because yeah. we, We've been 16 at some point and how we deal with things is not necessarily um we're not able to as as ryan was saying the language it's not there it's not there we're not able to say i'm yeah. depressed or i'm going through something mm -hmm. yeah. what would up yeah. and then it just transpires into something that's very destructive and and those are moments that i can relate to and yeah. and it's, it speaks to those topics that ryan's piece actually does so brilliantly is, is mm is that is, is saying that just, you know, it's important to have conversations um, because if you don't have those conversations, things can happen and and you might not be able to come back from it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, and, and you make a good point about the performers as well, because in our piece, there were, there was there there's a there's a strong connection with the characters and the actors and yeah the stories the stories cross over and they requires as dan done so brilliantly and 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 the team as well everyone involved um there's a there's a requirement of pastoral care you need to make sure that the performers are are able to separate the work from themselves despite how close it may be and yeah. And we found we found that that was important as well to the telling of the story and, and working on it. Absolutely, we had Rubria King with us, um, mm -hmm. who also works yeah. with you as well. So yeah, yeah. we had a connection. <laughs> we had a connection there about pastoral care and, and just kind of understanding when it's self and, and when it's the character and, and you know those parallel things that exist in them and the synergy that exists in them. And just on the kind of topic of synergy, it it feels very much like you know. Our characters in Red Pitch are the younger versions of some of the characters that you have in, yeah, in, in yeah, Blackwood. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you see the kind of yeah. you see them growing up, right? You see them, and then you see them in your play, and it's like, wow, yeah. 
that's them that's them a little bit older understanding themselves in retrospect yeah which is a, a really beautiful thing that we I guess we've just discovered this by having these conversations now yeah and talk, and, and talking about the kind of culture that exists right you know we've had a we've had a person in the community um, in Jamal Edwards that's you know that's happened over the last 48 hours uh, or just over that 72 hours and he was a major influence on a lot of uh, you know what we have as as Black British people in in this space, and what we've created here, and you know music, you know the music industry's been severely like shook since mm-hmm. his passing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'd love to kind of talk about the impact that you know not just not just Jamal, but the kind of impact of what culture's brought to your pieces and. You know, we explore it in Red Pitch a lot with the musicality and stuff yeah. and the language. But if you look yeah. and just touch on that for me, that, that would be dope. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting, man, because I look, when I look to Jamal and I, I look to Graham, right, where when people ask me where I'm from, I say I'm from Ends. Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not Guyanese, I'm not British. I, I'm yeah. not Guyana, they're like, you're, you're, you're English player. In here, they're like, oh, where are you from? from? I'm from Ends. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Graham is my traditional music. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. a piece of me, it's a part of me. That's the first thing that ever made me go, I'm an artist. Do you know I mean? All of yeah. us thought we were going to be a rapper at one point, and then you're like, there's, there's other things in this culture that, I, <laughs> that I'm on that band. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, to me, Jamal is, is, is an icon in the culture and moving it forward. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. An innovator. So, you know, when he did his passing, for me, it's a piece of the culture that, but for me, when he passed, I was like, I cried, and I was like, it felt like we couldn't have anything, man. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was like, like, yes, he is black, but he's also British. And I feel like yeah. what something that we are all doing is we are really creating something that feels authentically ours. So when I was yeah. growing up, anything, anything that was theatre that was of weight was American. And I can go, yeah. okay, there's something that I can relate to in this, but really and truly, it's still not ours, ours, ours. And seeing Red P the other day, I was like, I know that that's ends. Do you know what I mean? When my man, oh, no spoilers, oh, no spoilers. <laughs> the part of it that I was like, come on, man. Like, only us would know. And I yes. appreciate that. Do you know what I mean? Because when I was going to Shakespeare, and I, when I was watching, when I was going to school and watching Shakespeare, there were parts of Shakespeare that went straight over my head. And I was like, I have yeah, to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Work for me. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. And I'm really trying to get that in our heart. And I feel like, you know, grand music and, and, and the work that Jamal done, has transcended now into, into mainstream. It still feels like yeah. it's authentic, but it's transcended. And I feel yeah. like now it's our time in theatre. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is something that's felt really elitist, very white and middle class. Mm. And now we're going, actually, as young guys from a certain part of the world, we're creating work that has weight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm feeling, that's yeah. why I'm excited. Yes. That's why I'm excited. Do you know what I mean? You said, you, said something to me, you said something to me, Ryan, the other day, actually, when you came, yeah. when you came to the push. And you were like, bro, it's such a massive difference sometimes. And like, I guess this is what you, you're exploring for black boys, right? But it's such a massive difference between men and that are from ends, right? Like I grew up in a state, I moved from an estate to another to another estate, you know what I mean? And I know T's, again, I don't want to talk for you, but, and, you know, that experience of being from an estate has fed its way into red pitch. And like, and, you know, Jamal talks about it, Jamal, talk, Jamal talked about it quite a bit, you know, being, being in and around the estate and acting. And like, just all the brilliant, beautiful things that have come out of that. Like, yeah. the culture that's come out yeah. from, from Mandem that have just been... And not, not you know, just Mandem, so forgive me, not just Mandem, but from the estate. You know, yeah. all the different yeah. beautiful things that we've been able to produce and make. Yeah. From... Well, what I was saying is that I... Before I left, so I went to university in Bournemouth. Before that, I, I'm from Lewisham, yeah? I'd hardly yeah. ever left Lewisham in my life, right? Yeah. I left, I left to go to Bournemouth and everyone was like, oh my gosh, Ryan, you've been stabbed how many times? You know what I mean? And I was like, what? Ends was the most, Lucian was the most beautiful place in the world to me. Beautiful. It was everything I knew. Do you know what I mean? Culture, food, community, language. Do you know what I mean? Even mm. the language we speak wasn't just, it wasn't a black thing. It was like, you come from this place so you speak the same. Do you know what mm, I mean? Yeah. Yes. It was a culture and it was amazing. So, Everything that's dark about this, I've learned from outside of my community. Yeah. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So when we're bringing these stories to stage, I'm like, no, nah, we're going to see the beauty of this because that's all I saw, bro. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And even the yeah. brothers in Red Pitch, you know, 
this is all they see. Do you know what I mean? You can look at it on the outside and go, of course, that, that state needs tearing down. It's awful. But they're like, yo, always I want to speak on behalf of this. You like to play, but do you know what I mean? It, me. it was like, no, this is our world. Do you know what I mean? It's our world. So, it's our world. Yeah, man. T, you're bringing the question to you, man. No, I could only just echo what Ryan said. Like, Jamal, it's a tragic loss. It's a very tragic loss. Like, what he did for the culture is so, so important and, and so significant. He showed, you know, he was he was so... He had such foresight to just be able to pick up a camera and then have the bravery. Cause, and even at that time, you know, it was it was difficult to, to leave your area. So just to have the bravery mm -hmm. to travel multiple places and document artists and their art form and give them a platform platform them and now they've gone on to like achieve incredible things all down to mm. his, his foresight and his pioneering mentality mm. it's a it's a tragic loss and you know for me personally of course i don't want to make it up by myself but with with hood documentary just seeing just just seeing that you can just do something yourself you know mm, just yeah. pick up a camera and and mm. just doing it that's it's coming from there it's coming from jamal so yeah. uh, I owe a lot to him and, and, and yeah, my thoughts and prayers with his family and his legacy it will, it will live on. It will live on forever. Because, yeah, he's, he's, the, the culture would be different if he, weren't, if he weren't there. You know what I mean? He's the GOAT, man. He's the GOAT. Again, yeah. it's another strand that's kind of touched all of us at mm. some point. Another person that's touched all of us at some point. Yeah. I love that. So many, you know, you're, you're finding so many links and so many moments mm -hmm. that you kind of cross over, which is, which is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so let's get into the let's get into the difficult stuff. Nah, um, and I'll be brief on this one because I know we've only got a little bit of time left. So I, just again, thanks for everyone joining us this afternoon. Really appreciate it. This will be available for you to watch at some point um, on both or on all three channels. Neva Reach. So we should big up Ryan for that on um, Bush and also on Four. So. Both plays deal with trauma, you know, mm -hmm. to an extent. You know, losing your losing your space, losing your home. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Puma tracksuit. Um, and then the other, you know, and another one, exploring mm -hmm. mental health, specifically in you know, in black men and black boys. Mm -hmm. And 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 of course, you know, we talked about the crossover of those things. But what you lot have been able to do so expertly is really talk about the joy and find the joy in the, in those things. Why was that important for you, T? I think that you can, at times you can, um, it's almost like you can, you can, you can obsess over the trauma too much and you can, you can dwell in it and you, uh, but, but I think as an artist, what I'm really interested in is seeing char flawed characters. I love, mm -hmm. I love seeing flawed characters because we're human beings and we make mistakes. And I think trauma is a large part of the reason why we make mistakes. Mm. And I think that sometimes gets overlooked. We, we see a mistake and we immediately base our judgment on that person because of the mistake that they've made, unaware of the trauma that they're having to go through. And I think the reason why it's, it's important not to, not, to, not, to, not to dwell on it too much is, is because it's, it's part of who we are. It's, it's part of our... It's part of our character, and it's and it's a it's about identifying it and and tackling it and trying to become a better person, but also acknowledging that it's not easy to do those things. Mm. But I think it's important to me not to demonize it. I think yeah. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to demonize it. It's about humanizing it, and then because I think that's the first step to to tackling it and overcoming mm. overcoming trauma. Growing up, growing up on a council estate, personally, you know, there was there were things that I've experienced that many would consider to be traumatic experiences, and even you don't really realize that as as you, as you guys were discussing earlier, you don't realize that until you're out of it. It's like, oh wow, that's what I was dealing with. Or that was sitting with me for that whole time, and I didn't even know that's why I was moving that way. That's why I did that. That's why you know what I'm saying. So, I think. I think it's important to to humanize the trauma and and then proceed to have a conversation thereafter rather than just saying yeah this is like you're a demon for for doing that and do you know what I mean yeah Ryan 
Sick. Um, lessons, man. Yeah, I think for me, just looking at art and culture in general and the history of, of, of black artists, and I reckon some of our best work has come out of trauma um, as a response to it. So I'm not accepting it. I don't believe my people have ever accepted trauma at any point in history. But we make light. Do you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, we have to continue. Do you know what I mean? We have to continue. You look at jazz music, you look at the music from slavery, what they made to kind of, do you know what I mean? Whether it was to send messages or whether it was just to feel and feel joyful. And mm. a lot of the trauma that I see in the work that I write comes from uh, hindsight. Yes. At that particular moment, you wake up in the morning and you, and you try to have a good day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And especially with the play I've just written, the day that you don't do that is the day that you succumb to it and, you, and, and then yeah. you feel suicidal and you want to end things. Other than that, there is a journey of the joy that you bring into life, why you want to live, why you want somebody else to want to live. Do you know what I mean? Why, what, what makes you happy? You sing a song. So much of our music is uplifting. Do you know what I mean? Because we need it. And um, I was like, why are we not seeing that part of the art? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and essentially my play is not a play to say, to, we're not, I'm not getting six guys in a room to go, okay, let's talk about ending our life. Actually, yeah. let's get six guys in a room to talk about the joy of actually staying alive. Mm. So that's the result of this play. Do you know what I mean? It's not something to take my audience through some traumatic. It's like, no, yes, we go through things, but in any kind of uh, any kind of odyssey, you want your protagonist to be able to come out of the other side, right? I'm not saying I can cure suicide, but I'm saying let's think of some reasons why we want to stay alive. Yeah. Um, it's important. So, uh, yeah, because I know people talk about traumas, like, oh, let's take it away. And I'm like, it's still happening, though. Let's not ignore yes. things that are happening. Yeah. But let's deal with it. We're artists. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's add nuance to it. Mm. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the great point that you do make, Ryan, about the, the art, a lot of great art coming from, from traumatic places. I think that's a, that's a really good point that, that resonates, that resonates with me. Yeah. So, look, I know i um, probably gone over a little bit, but I, and usually we'd have audience questions, but look, come and, come and join us in the theatre and we're around. I'm sure, Ryan, your play starts at Royal Court on the, the 30th of March, is that right? 31st, I believe. 31st yeah, of March. Yeah, yeah. 31st of March to the to the 30th of April. Yeah. So, yeah. and um, and Terrell, obviously, your play's already started and finishes on the 26th of March. Be sharing audiences and communities that were pieces and getting two total different experiences, which is lovely and brilliant. Yeah. Because we're not one monolithic kind of yeah. idea of what you know theatre for for. for uh, our community exists it doesn't exist in one kind of you know monolithic idea so yeah man I, I just want to say thank you both for, for writing these pieces creating these pieces big up Tristan as well he supported you Ryan in, in creating it um, yeah. Terrell it's been an absolute pleasure my guy kicking it with you literally um, yeah we go again man and I can't wait to see you both yeah. just keep shining and keep rising man like, I've known you man for years as well. So this is years, a pleasure. <laughs> I've known you man for years. Yeah. So, yeah, keep doing it, man. It's inspiring. You know what I'm saying? Nah, big love, man. Big love. Big love. Big love. <laughs> Wicked. Love that. See you lot in a bit. Thank you for joining us, peoples. See you in a bit as well. Peace. Try find where the truth is, hear what I did.